Hello, everyone. So I had a friend, I have a friend who posted something the other day, which was concerning to me. Um, she was talking about how she had so many feelings about so many things that were going on her, on in her life. As m many of us do, we have things that impact us from day to day and um, some things overwhelm us. But the thing that concerned me was she's a person who, like myself, grew up in the church and is familiar with God. And um, she said that her first inkling was not to pray to God. She actually did not want to pray, God, your will be done, because she was afraid of what his will would be. She was afraid of the outcome. She was actually afraid to pray or, or to give everything into God's hands and to trust him because she was scared of what the outcome would be. She was scared that she would see more bad if she would actually pray to God that his will be done. And um, that was disturbing because I feel like so much, um, so many times today, the only thing we're hearing about from the pulpit is the prosperity gospel. Um, we're hearing about cars and houses and God blessing us with this. And if we serve God correctly, then he'll give us money and money, money, money. And we're not hearing a lot of people teach about who God is, about, um, his love and his compassion for us. So I think we're losing sight of that part of him. And the only thing we're looking at is what we can get from him. God, give me, give me, give me. And um, treating him like he's a genie and trying to find all types of scriptures to manipulate God and to get him to give us what we need or what we want. And I think that's been the focus of the gospel and there are so many people who actually need God. They need him because they're going through and they need answers and they need to understand who this God is that we serve. There are so many attributes to God and there are so many aspects to God that we're just not being taught. So I just wanted to take this time to share with you a few scriptures that explain who God is, because I think we need to understand that he needs to be the one that we go to. We need to trust him. We don't need to be fearful of him and we don't need to be apprehensive when it comes to praying to him and to giving him our problems. So I wanted to start with Psalm 138 verses seven through eight. And I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. And your right hand will save me. The Lord will accomplish that which concerns me. Your unwavering loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your own hands. God wants to take care of us. Then we go to Psalm 145 verses 8 through 9. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works the entirety of things created. God does not want us to suffer. That's not his intention for us. He, we are his creation and he loves us, especially those that have surrendered his life to him. He's actually a loving God that feels pity when something happens to us. He's a just God when we don't do things that are right, just like our parents punish us when we don't do things that are right, but it doesn't mean that they don't love us. He's a wonderful God. Let's go to Isaiah, the 49th chapter, verses 15 through 16. Now, this is um, a promise to Zion. The Lord answered, can a woman forget her 
Nur now, this this is actually an answer um, to Zion. I'll, I guess I'll start um, with verse 14. But Zion, Jerusalem in captivity said, the Lord has abandoned me and my Lord has forgotten me. And sometimes that's how we feel. We can feel like God has abandoned us, that he's forgotten about us and we don't see any movement and that he doesn't care. But this is what the Lord answered them. The Lord answered, can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. Indeed, I have inscribed a picture of you on the palm of my hands. Your city walls, Zion, are continually before me. God is concerned about each and every part of our life. There's nothing in our life that gets by him. And he always wants everything to work out for our good because he's a loving God. And the last scripture that I like to share with you is Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, or the passage of scripture, I should say, Jeremiah 29 verses 11 through 14. And again, this is the amplified version. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. Then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, said the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes, and I will free you and gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place where I sent you into exile. And this is a message that he has for Israel. And what he's trying to tell them is that he loves them so much that that no matter what they're experiencing right now they should know that once they surrender to him and come back to him he, he will rescue them from what they are in because the thoughts in his heart towards them are good and they're not for destruction there's um, a passage of scripture that um, I actually came across one time and I love this scripture is Psalm 62 verse 8 and it says trust confidently in him that is God at all times O people pour out your heart before him God is a refuge for us this passage of scripture admonish, admonishes us to tell God all about it tell him about everything we can trust him it's, we're not we're not telling him anything that he does not know and in us telling him things we're not um opening ourselves up to disaster and the bible says that we are supposed to trust in him with all our heart and lean not into our own understanding in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths so shrinking shrinking away from him and being afraid of him and being uh afraid to pray to him that his will be done is not his uh is not his desire for us he died so that we could have a relationship with him he suffered so that we don't necessarily have to go through and experience all the things that we would suffer had he not done or made the sacrifice that he made. So for anyone who's going through anything, don't be afraid to go to God. Don't be afraid to yield yourself to him. Don't be afraid to pour your heart out before him because his thoughts for you are not of evil. They're only for good. And he wants to make everything that is going on in your life, all of the chaos, he wants to turn it around for your good. But the Bible even says that he causes all things to work together for your good. If you love him and you are the called according to your purpose, according to his purpose, 
So next time you're going through something, do not hesitate to lay it all out to God, to leave everything before him because he's able to keep that which you have committed to him. He's able to take care of everything and he loves you enough that he doesn't want to see you fall. Until next time, be blessed.